Good morning, everybody. Enter the stars. And for those of you that turn that tuned in today, sorry, I'm stumbling over my words already. You are in for a treat because today we're going to review the supernatural revelations that God has revealed through eclipses. Now, to me, these eclipse shows are one of my favorites because God has re revealed so much over the last decade on this channel. So that's what we're going to break down today. Now, in 2013, we began to notice that the elite use eclipse days to mark the beginnings and ending of things. And that they use these eclipses as portals of sacrifice. Now, during eclipses, the veil between the spirit world and our world is the thinnest. And this is when the elite commune with evil. And this is where I believe they get their instructions for the agenda that the enemy wants to propagate on mankind. Now we're going to start the show with this 2013 video in which we discovered the Canon of 400. Now, the Canon of 400 had already been discovered at this point. But we were looking at this and we broke it down and we found something very interesting. Now, what is the Canon of 400? Well, it's the ratio between the sun, the moon, and their sizes that is necessary for the moon to exactly cover the sun during an eclipse. Now, I want you to listen to this part. The reference to this previous video that I did, How to Balance Faith with the Secrets of the Universe. And I'm just going to read here in the description box. The reason why eclipses occur is because... The moon is 400 times smaller than the sun and 400 times closer to the earth than the sun is. Okay, this is our vantage point as human beings. We see an exact covering of the sun by the moon. Now, this was 2013. Now, the interesting part about this is that later we discovered that this 400 ratio is a reflection of another portal. It's actually the length of gestation of the human fetus, 40 weeks. And of course, that is a reflection and a metaphor of the 40 days and nights of the flood, the 40 years in the wilderness of the Israelites, and Jesus' 40 days of testing. What we uncovered here is the nested nature of our reality, that you can find truth by looking at things within things. Because who knew the canon of 400 when the Bible was written down. The only person that could have possibly known that was the Most High Himself. And so now you see how the heavens prove His existence and His glory. Now, I don't believe these distances that they're talking about, and I'll tell you why in a minute. I don't believe that these vast distances are between these objects. And here's one example I'm going to show you. And we had discovered this back in 2013, that when you look at the actual location of the Great Pyramid in Egypt, I'm going to pull it up right here. Here it is. You look at the exact coordinate, GPS coordinate, 29.979245. Five, eight. that they are actually telling us that that coordinate is also the exact same digits as the speed of light in meters per second. There it is right there. Meters per second, speed of light. And the exact coordinate of the center of the tip of the Northern Great Pyramid. Now, the assumption here, the assertion, is that the ancient Egyptians knew the speed of light, which of course they didn't. It's a very exact measurement. There's no way they could have known this. You can't find the speed of math mathematically unless you have speed of light, sorry, not life, unless you have very exact equipment. But yet, we're supposed to believe because science tells us basically what happened was a scientist goes, oh, let's make up a number. Let's pick 
the tip of the pyramid in its location, and that will be the speed of light. Do you see how this works? So I don't believe science because they can make up whatever they want. So I'm not sure if we made this discovery or someone else did, but this shows you that you can't believe what science says. Now, here's what we do know about eclipses that suggests that what they tell us is not the truth. Both the sun and the moon follow a 19-year cycle. The moon replicates its phase and position in the sky every 19 years, and solar eclipses repeat every 19 years as well. They call this a metonic cycle. Now we're going to go back into some of these older videos that we did back in 2013 and beyond and look at this and break this down. So the metonic cycle is 19 years and this is the, the cycle that they choose to enact any worldwide agendas. We saw it with Blind 11. 19 year, years later, after 19 sky walkers, jackers, we had CV-19 with the same boogeyman. And 19 years before Blind 11, we had something else. Now understand that this is the enemy trying to be like the Most High because there are actually 19 total feast days. Some of the feast days repeat. But God's holy feast days, there are actually 19 total in the year, the calendar year. And the Juice Club actually follows a 19-year cycle as well. Make sure we're connected. We'll keep going with this this morning. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Glad we're connected here. Now, here's the question. How can two heavenly bodies that we are told are millions of miles apart and in their own orbits have the same 19-year cycle? This would be tantamount to two people inventing the bicycle, for instance, in two separate parts of the world, speaking different languages. But then when they bring the invention of the bicycle before each other, they realize that they both put 19 spokes in the tires. Pretty much close to impossible, because why would they arbitrarily come up with that number 19? And that's the same thing as the sun and the moon, separate heavenly bodies, following the same 19-year cycle. Now, here's where things go off the rails, because then, in 2014, we made another a miraculous discovery about the nature of our reality. Here's the video here. And we found that during Jesus' life, he witnessed five total eclipses. Two of those fell on the 88th day of the year. March 29th, and two others fell on December 14th. Listen to this. Jesus saw during his life, two of which occurred on December 14th and two occurring on March 29th, his final eclipse occurring on 9-11 at the age of 37 years old. Now, we're going to analyze the data, and this is just amazing. Now, keep focused on the numbers three years old, nine years old, 23, 36, and 37. And remember, the sixes and the nines are mirrors and virtually mean the same thing. But in looking at these numbers, this is just unbelievable. So this was back in 2014. That was a chilling discovery because the eclipse would have been visible from his location on Earth on those dates which was just amazing. Now, in 2017, we had discovered that Egypt is America. Let me see if I have that video queued up for you guys. Here it is. This was 2017. Egypt is in America, where the two eclipses, one was in 2017 and one hasn't happened yet. It's coming up in April 8th, 2024. They crossed in the middle in a place called Macanda, Illinois. And we said back then in 2017 that an exodus was going to happen 
out of Egypt, which is America, of course. And sure enough, it's all happening right now in 2021. People are leaving little Egypt. They're leaving America. Now, many people are heading toward the South, Texas, other southern, uh, southern states, which are outside the image that we have of Egypt. Now, this is crazy because in this video, I overlaid the Egyptian Nile Delta over the floodplain, well, actually the headwaters of the Mississippi River. And then we looked at towns and cities dotted throughout America that seemed to line up in their names and locations with real cities in America and also in Egypt. They cross over. And we even found stories of real slaves escaping their captors in Egypt, in America. Now, what do we do with this information? Well, we're just recounting how the Holy Spirit has poured out on this channel and tried to warn people. Because here we are. The exodus is well underway. Now, a lot of people listened. They got out before things got bad. But now you can't even build a house. You can't. The land has gone through the roof. Building costs through the roof. If any of you have tried to put an addition on your house or build anything, the window of opportunity is slowly closing to get out of these places. Now, you'll notice also the inversion of this where you have over here the coasts are the worst place places to live. They're the most, uh, I guess the word would be, uh, the most Egypt-like in their tyranny. But you also have this center area. Now, Illinois is interesting because we've been doing a lot of work on Lincoln and the backwards world when it comes to Lincoln and how he's perceived and what he is said to have done, but what he really felt about people of color. And so Illinois is the central part of this, where he is from. So the exodus has begun. Now, we told you back then as well that the plagues were coming, that we're basically playing out the Old Testament all over again here in America, that the plagues were coming. You can go back on these videos and listen and watch. We told you it was coming. As NASA released these this ritual virus balloons over America during, the, during um, this eclipse that happened in 2017. Now, the eclipse in 2017 went... From up here, down through Georgia, I believe. And then the other one crosses it. Let me see if there's a thumbnail on here. Now, if you play this video, some of the sound is knocked out because they hit us with like a copyright. So some of the sound got knocked out on this one, unfortunately. But the gist of it is there. And there are several other videos as well that relate to this as, as well that you can pick up on about these eclipses. And little Egypt. So, this was the ritual. And then two years after this, we got CV-19 and the plagues actually began. So, what, what was this really about? Well, remember Jonas and Jambres, the Gemini twins in the Pharaoh's court? I believe they represented Trump. He's a Gemini. And he probably has a twin. And remember what Jonas and Jambres did. Turning staffs. Caduceus staffs. Into a snake. Has anyone ever considered that before? The staff and snake is the caduceus. And Jonas and Jambres turned their staffs into snakes. That is the fake healing. That is the healing of the enemy. The false healing. Pharmakia. And what were, what were Jonas and John Brace doing? They were battling Moses and Aaron. They were the true doctors of the Most High. 
forefathers of the true doctor himself, Yahushua, Jesus. So what did Jonas and Jambres aim to do? What was their aim? They wanted to sink the fangs of the snake into you to give you the cure. The pair of stingers in your arm. All of this is spiritual. And now, what are we having? The plagues have begun. The grievous sores. And, and who knows what's next? When you don't go on faith and you trust Jonas and Jambres, then you become, you're at the mercy of the enemy. Now, who might Jambres be? Well, that could just as well be Bo Jiden. Why not? He's doing the same exact agenda as Janus number one did, Trump. They're both trying to sting you. So there's no difference. So they're like twins. Now, let's complete the record here because then here's the cascade of events here. These go, these go all the way back. Let's see if we've got the dates in here. Here we go. These are the videos that we did. Then we found out that during... An eclipse FX the channel or the, uh, what do you, I guess you call it, the TV channel. They tweeted that the master is here. Here it is right here. This was tweeted on an eclipse. And this was in reference to the strain series, the series called the strain and this was all about vampires and infection and eclair. And this was in 2017. And I believe what they were really talking about here is CV-19 that was coming. Now, let's keep going down through this. Now, here's a beautiful eclipse that we captured during my two years in France. Let's, uh, let's take a look at this. This is really cool. Guys, enter the stars. I'm not sure what this is going to pick up, but uh, it's a clips, partial clips here in France. It must be going down any minute here. And um, one thing I can tell you is that this uh, the sky was full, literally full, full of uh, full of clouds. And about an hour ago, the entire sky just miraculously cleared out. I guess he's trying to make the eclipse. Okay, so it's about 8.35 here, 8.40. What's going to happen is you're going to see the moon is going to rise up from the horizon and then go and clip the bottom of the sun. So I'm wondering uh, how this is all going to pan out. Of course, you can't see the moon. Now, of course, this was a partial eclipse from my vantage point, but nonetheless, it was pretty spectacular. I ended up driving out because I couldn't see over the horizon. It was a setting eclipse. I wanted to make sure I could see as much of it as possible. So I hopped in my car and I drove out to this point here. You guys can actually look up this location on Google Maps and see exactly where I was standing. And uh, the moon clipped the bottom of the sun. Wow, that's pretty amazing. Just the edge of the moon clipping barely the sun. That's fascinating. I think we're at the, the point of total eclipse here. Even though it wasn't a total eclipse, it was a partial eclipse. But anyway, uh, something very bizarre and spiritual about eclipses now let's head back and look at the record here because there came a certain point at which 
we discovered that the eclipses in crossing America, past, present, and future, seem to form a pentagram over the U.S. Here's the video here. This was uh, 2018. Then we fast forward to 2020, and we realized that CV-19 began and stayed on two eclipses. Let me pull up that for you here. This was a live show that we did. Look, there we are live. Okay, so here it is. The two eclipses that started and continued the CV-19 spamdemic. It began on December 26, 2019. It was the first case identified in this country. And it forms what we had identified as a smiley face. Now that year and beyond 2020, the smiley face began, it actually became the meme of evil. We saw the smiley face as a button on the devil in the TV series, The Stand. He had this button on his shirt, which was a smiley face. Now, eclipses aren't all bad. I believe they're portals or some kind of gates. We discovered that Sheba and Solomon actually met under eclipses during their reign. Let's pull that up here. Here's the video we did on Sheba and Solomon. And there were crossing eclipses, like X marks the spot, during their reign and lives. And of course, they met. So they basically met spiritually in the heavens by way of these eclipses and portals. Now remember, eclipses mimic birth, the birth portal, as we talked about earlier in the show, right? So it makes sense that as people are born into this world, Solomon and Sheba, that this could coincide in the heavens. So these were some of the eclipse discoveries that we made over the last decade that I wanted to reshare with you guys. And you can see the titles here and you can pull all these up and see them for yourselves if you have, you know, more interest in this. Here's the Macanda, Illinois eclipses. They cross. Oh, look, there's the smiley face. See? We're not making this up. We also know that eclipse paths, the paths of eclipse, eclipses often form smiley faces on the planet. Now, of course, I don't believe that the shape of the planet is what they tell us, but this is why it, it makes a smiley face because it's the lie. It's evil, right? So let's go back here. They want us to believe that this is the shape of the eclipse as it crosses a circular planet right but this is a smile of evil the smile of the lie so the ball or the globe is the lie right interesting gives itself away now so that's those are the eclipse discoveries that i wanted to share with you guys and now that brings us to today so what is the day of the year on the calendar where an eclipse can never occur that would be Easter and also the uh, crucifixion of Christ for that matter now isn't that fitting the one day where an eclipse can never occur on the calendar would be Easter and let's read this a little bit why a solar eclipse can never occur on Easter this is interesting Easter Sunday falls on March 27th this year. This was back in 2016. This article came out. One of those years when it felt feels like the holiday arrives too early. In 2008, we had the earliest Easter in almost a century when it occurred on March 23rd. Its earliest arrival since 1913. Next year, we'll celebrate Easter much later on April 16th. 
We celebrate other holidays that change dates each year, like Thanksgiving, but at least Thanksgiving always occurs on the fourth Thursday of November, regardless of the actual date. Easter, on the other hand, seems to jump from day to day in almost random pattern, falling anywhere from March 22nd to April 25th. Now, this March 22nd number is important because this falls 88 days after Christmas. 88 days after Christmas. Now, this also marks the beginning date of the Festival of Hilaria, in which they have a Christ mockery ritual, in which they cut down a baby tree, decorate it with violets and wool, like the slain lamb. Then they resurrect it, after a blood ceremony. Hilaria. Look it up. So, why does the date of Easter vary so widely from year to year anyway? Here's why. According to the Bible, Jesus was crucified and resurrected around the time of the Jewish Passover. So, early Christians decided to celebrate each Easter each year on that same time. There wasn't really an agreement, though, on exactly which day the holiday should be observed. Some celebrated on the first day of Passover. Others celebrated on Sunday following the first day of Passover. It wasn't until 326 CE that the date of Easter was standardized, or more accurately, the formula to determine the date of Easter each year was standardized. A group of bishops known as Council of Nicaea. Now, these are the folks that removed the Book of Enoch from the canon mandated that Easter would thereafter always fall on the first Sunday after the first full moon occurring on or after the vernal equinox, the first day of spring. If the full moon happened to occur on Sunday, Easter would be celebrated the following Sunday. Christians have been using this date determination method ever since, with the only adjustment being a change in the calendar itself when the Julian calendar gave way to the Gregorian calendar. For example, if you were still using the Julian calendar, the date of Easter this year would be April 18th instead of March 27th. In fact, Easter Christians still use the Julian calendar. So they celebrate Easter this year on May 1st, which is April 16th. Again, this was a 2016 article. So, begs the question. Easter can never fall an eclipse. Now, what about Nisan 14? The actual date of the Passover according to the true calendar, which doesn't fall on Easter. That will be another show. I'll research that and see if, in fact, eclipses had occurred on Nissan 14. So that's what I wanted to show you guys today. I wanted to kind of do a review on all of the amazing discoveries that uh, God has revealed to us about eclipses going back on this channel to 2013 and you see how it could makes a complete picture now there was no way for me to know the beginning from the end of the research that we did but there it is and it creates a complete circle and now you can see it clearly now when you're in the middle of it or if you're watching one video or two videos you're gonna think i'm crazy or i'm mad but we follow the holy spirit and it tells us where to look and what to look for and we have faith that it's all going to make sense in the end. And in fact, it did make sense in the end. Foreshadowing the great spamdemic of 2019-2020, as well as the exodus from Egypt. Everyone's leaving because they don't want to get stung with the snake. And many, many other things that we just reviewed. Supernatural revelations. So I appreciate all of you that have been part of this journey because many of you were the ones that told me where to look as you were inspired by the Holy Spirit. So let's go into the chat for a bit. Okay. Thanks, everybody, for showing up. Thanks for modding, Tom. Looks like we got some, uh, a few trolls today. I can imagine that they would be here. 
trying to derail the uh the positive let me help Tom with this person in here harvest time wants to go away for being rude and let's keep looking through the chat here All right. Yeah, if you just tune in to the show, um, make sure and go back and listen to the beginning because this is very important. It's going to be one of our better shows because we actually could document and look back at what we've, where we've been, where we've come. And this will help people, you know, it'll build their faith. It'll help them to understand how God has worked on this channel. And how he wants to work in your life. Um, someone asked me about Noah. I had already decoded Noah. I think they're re-uploading it to Netflix. So that's the same film that we decoded back in, I think, 2014. Maybe I'll re-upload that Noah decode or, um, you know, do something with that. Get that back up for you guys because it's pretty crazy. Sometimes I'll re-decode things because... With new eyes, we can find even more stuff, you know? So I've done that from time to time. I might have to go back and re-decode all the Toy Story stuff. I can't find it anywhere, you guys. I'm really, really sorry, but I was pulling them down in a frenzy because the channels were catching strikes left and right for anything that had to do with the men that like children, right? And we were exposing that right and left, and... YouTube did not like that. So they were handing out strikes like candy. So we had to go through and pull all of that down. All the work we did on that stuff. Exposing all their secret coding in the mainstream. Programming people. So now it's not to say that some people didn't mirror those videos. So like if you go onto YouTube and you type in enter the stars toy story maybe some channels had mirrored the videos and that would be great you could pull them down that way so can you believe this 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 was just wild i remember when we first discovered this speed of light thing it's right there the same gps coordinate this would be the i think this is the north latitude coordinate the same digits, all of them exactly repeated in order. There's no way. That's why we don't believe science in there. Oh, we're on, we're flying helicopters on Mars. Yeah, right. Whatever. There's another trillion dollars. So, there you go. Anyway, we've got more scheduled for the rest of the week. What do we got here? We have... We have another decode on another trailer that I put together for this series. Oh, I'll give you guys a little teaser. This is crazy. Okay, this is from the series Helix Season 2. And we'll end the show with this. Does Ilaria would suspend work on the Narvik virus. Remember Ilaria? This is the name of the corporation in the Helix series. Remember we talked about Hilaria, which is the same word without the H on it? Watch this. You were assured we would suspend human testing. Nothing more. You told me. Wait, I gotta go back. Sorry, guys. Go back. There we go. What? That's the death map from John Hopkins. Now, I'm going to put together a montage of this, but I wanted to give you guys a little heads up on this. Had assurances we expect this to be a short list any months and we'd still have the ability to administer the cure for 85 with 17 coordinated strikes we can reduce world population by 75 percent within three months what so there you go this was back in 2015 you guys this episode came out so we'll get on that 
I'm putting that together. So there you go. You can't make it up. I don't even have to do anything but show them their own programming. That's how we get around the algos. I mean, what are they going to... These these same shows are all over YouTube. All we're doing is pulling them out so you could see them clearly. We're showing you the trees in the forest. You know, the forest from the trees. We're showing you the trees from the forest. So... I love each and every one of you. Have a great day and uh, be safe, everyone.